Zabe Shake. Yes. Here you are, <laughs> sitting here in my office. Loving it. Oh, I'm, I'm so excited to have you here. You Very especially you. because you kind of come from my world of two decades of <laughs> South Asians kind of pioneering the story. Yeah. And the story in the arts is a real big deal for me. It's it's why I do what I do with Anoki and with um, Open Chest. And congratulations, I by the way, it's fantastic. I know you've uh, featured a lot of not only Canadians and Torontonians, but international folks. Uh, given them your pages, your media, it's very cool. So congrats. Thank you so much. Well, you know, it, it comes from my background in England. In, in England, You're English. Up, I am British. I'm a British South Asian. Could never tell. <laughs> and you know, the interesting thing is that when I was growing up, and I feel that this was um, possibly the same parallel story in your case here in Canada. I grew up during the 80s, mm -hmm. um, and that's how young I am. Yeah. And um, back Me in too. those yes, and back in those days, it was it was a really interesting space for South Asians to grow up in, because we weren't quite understood at that time by our parents. I came here. Um, back in the um, early 90s and I felt an even larger kind of you know stepping back where our community was concerned because mm. you know in England at that time that our community was really starting to kind of come out and you know go into the arts and yeah, into all the history those right? yeah, yeah. And, and kind of going into all those careers that were forbidden fruit back in those days and here nobody was in those nobody no, at all you're right. right other than people like yourself <laughs> Going strong. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, you went to school, you, d you did your fine arts, you, you, you did it all the right way. How did your parents let you get away back then when there weren't people like yourselves who are so you know, prominently in the mainstream mm -hmm. now in, in arts? People like you didn't exist back then, but you wanted to do this. Yeah, I mean, I got lucky because my parents were uh, immigrants, uh, 1970 from Pakistan to Toronto. They could have chosen anywhere in the world to go. They could have chosen the UK, the US. They could have stayed at home at that time. But they chose this city. And in this city, they also were one of the first people that started a community uh, radio show and television show. And right. really? so they, while my mother did read the news and sort of did the hosting, my dad was producer and wow. sort of organizing the act. So I kind of grew up in an environment um, where you were meant to, or you were expected to, I guess, you know, uh, communicate. Yes. Communicate your experience, because that's what they were doing as immigrants. They didn't see a lot of communication between the Pakistani Indian community and the Canadian community. And so there were a handful of these folks that took that leap. And my parents happened to be two of those folks. So I was very lucky to be raised in that kind of environment. Of course, they were still immigrants. So they were, as an only child, uh, you're hoping, I think, as parents that uh, the kid does, picks this most stable and <laughs> <laughs> of course. Stable sort of environment and career and I happened to say, great, that's awesome. You know, they were cautious, so that's mm -hmm. why you're right. I went through the proper channels, as you said. Yes. I was never, I never assumed I wasn't going to be pursuing a post-secondary education or a secondary education. That was just part of the world I lived in. Absolutely. Um, and so I didn't fight that because I didn't know you could fight, right. frankly. As now generations, you can go anywhere and do anything. Frankly, it's a great time to be alive yes. uh, when it comes to schooling. Um, but in my case, I was always going to go to university, so I just happened to choose the right avenues, and they happened to support that in the sense that they went, go ahead, go make it. Uh, You're you so know. lucky because very few people from our community going back, you know, as far as you know, we go back. Yeah. Um, can actually say something like this. Uh, yeah, no, I am lucky. And it, it, maybe it's because, like I said, you know, my parents came from both very progressive households back home, if you will. Yes. Um, uh, households that had known the world and had seen the world and wanted the world to be a part of the global experience that you had as human beings. So yes. my parents were all for that. But of course, like I said, they were cautious and they said, you better, you better make it because that's the only shot you got. So uh, here I am. You just got to work hard. Yeah, absolutely. And boy, have you made it. Uh, well, I don't what know about a that. portfolio. What a portfolio. <laughs> I am totally going to talk about your portfolio now. Acting, obviously, there's like a myriad of different type of roles you've done. You've done TV. You've done theater. You've done films. Obviously, you're most um, well known for Little Mosque on the um, yes, Prairie yes. as the Imam there. Um, five years, what a run. 
Great run, you know, over 90 countries around the world. We've won uh, humanitarian awards. We've been inducted into the Paley Center uh, in New York and LA. It's Incredible. We're taught in schools. I've had the good fortune of giving a keynote at Harvard based on how East and West uh, relationships in terms of culture and media. Uh, I've, I've, you know, I've, I've been on your pages yes. and talking to you now largely because of that show, essentially, that really kind of launched, as much as I was you know, I've come from the theater world and, and had, a, had a great career in the whole entertainment, creative, cultural scene in Toronto and Canada. Let's be honest, it was that show that not only launched me, uh, but also the idea that you could have a Western uh, show content cre and it be about cultural differences Absolutely. and yet still be a hit. But where else could something like that be a um, hit other than Canada? Yeah. The most. I mean, Toronto, especially the most diverse city in the world, it's got to be. It is. Over 100 languages are spoken here. 51% of the uh, population is born outside of Canada. And wow. yet it's kind of lives together in the best possible scenario, in spite of some of the coldest <laughs> winters you can have in the world. So yeah, but if you um, we're very lucky. And you know, um, the interesting thing um, for me, Zabe, is that, um, you know, I grew up amidst just so much racial prejudice. Um, in England yeah. um, as a South Asian and as, as a South Asian woman. I, I came here, my son now is 17 years old, That's right? There isn't a day that that boy has experienced what prejudice even means because he's born and brought up Canadian, Yeah. right? Yeah. There wasn't a day that went by in England when I was growing up that I wasn't subjected to some racial discrimination. Uh, yeah, I'm sure, and uh, it, you know we're lucky to be here because, in fact, we're so many places around the world that might be seen as very modern and contemporary, and we're still dealing with those same issues. Whether it's a gender issue, whether yeah. it's a cultural issue, whether it's an abilities issue, or whether, it, frankly, it's just a who you want to be uh, issue. Whether we're talking about the, the uh, you know the communities of gays and lesbians yes. and transgendered, like you, it's very hard to be who you want to be in the world. But Toronto is a city where you can be who you want to be and. Who who you happen to be, yes. who you are, yes. um, and that's the beauty of the city that we have. That's what really excites me about you know the position that you are in today, S <laughs> spring of this year. What an announcement! You know, the first time that we've had um, someone like yourself coming from you know the creative arts from our community, which is really exciting for <laughs> me. Film commissioner of Toronto, but the expanded first time role of also being the director of entertainment industries right. also. Yeah. So how does that feel? <laughs> um, I guess the, you know, the opportunities as a person of, uh, that takes a creative avenue in life and happens to be of a different culture than, although now I guess I'm part of a culture that it is the norm, <laughs> that is of the majority course. almost. Of course. <laughs> um, uh, but, <clears throat> There's, you get a lot. You get to be part of a lot of firsts, whether you know it or not, or whether you even want to be the first. You just happen to be. Yes. Um, I'm lucky enough that you're right. This position. There's always been a film commissioner in the city of Toronto, and there they have been great film commissioner commissions and commissioners that have done great work for the city of Toronto to get uh, the film industry happening here in a really important way. But this is an expanded uh, portfolio. This is all film, interactive, gaming, television, music. Uh, music now, music strategy, with live venues, with recording artists, with the record companies themselves, activating the, the, the music community, if you will, yes. uh, live events, whether it's World Pride or Pan Am, uh, food in terms of winterlicious, summerlicious. Yeah. Uh, we've got a fashion portfolio that we're uh, getting excited about. Uh, and tourism and visitor services, so all of the attractions and experiences that you can have in Toronto. And there's a team of about 30, 35 people at full, full tilt working together, meant to work strategically together, uh, and help all the industry stakeholders, as well as what I hope, open up the conversation and the possibility of Torontonians to get work in those industries. Absolutely. You know? Why do you feel that the city of Toronto decided to expand the role? Was it um, because they realized that there really was a substantial component of the entertainment and media industry that wasn't getting the focus, initially speaking, with the film commissioner's role being predominantly TV and um, film based? Yeah, I think, you know, I mean, I think Toronto itself is growing, as we all know. We're all part of that growth. Um, it has as any large city, it's there's a 
you have to be reactive as a city. So you know, you're trying to fulfill the needs and essential services and, and community good life. But Toronto now, in the last few years, has really taken the approach that it should be strategic and purposeful. And in that approach, uh, the, the city folk, and, 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 and whether it was on the council side of elected officials or on the city staff side, the city corporation, if you will, um, they came together and collectively decided and felt that there did need to be a cohesive strategy and an inclusive strategy, strategy where the industries that were entertainment and creative based had an opportunity from the city to interact with the city as a mechanism to help them grow, right. to facilitate their already great growth, and to kind of launch the f future. Because you're right, there is an amazing amount of talent, diverse talent, in front of the camera, in front of the microphone, behind the scenes, in the management offices, across the board when it comes to music, film, food, fashion, tourism. This great fortune was allowed to be part of this team in this way and to help lead it and uh, help Toronto become what we call a global media playground. Well, I, I think you're being really modest when you say that because I don't think the city would have um, flippantly chosen <laughs> who their new film commissioner is going to be, especially in this first time expanded role. I mean, there's so many variables that are now being centralized. Yes. in terms of resource pool yep. and you know you're, you're kind of manning the helm of that why did you feel that you wanted to you know go for this kind of a role when you applied you know it's uh, you're right because it wasn't uh, it's not an easy choice uh, i have i come from a very different background if you will in terms of career choice I, it wasn't my ambition uh, nor even a thought that i would ever work in this capacity to serve my industry. I have always been an industry person, like, right. you know, working in the trenches, if you will. Um, You've been on the, the creative industry. side yeah, of it. Now exactly. you're on the management side of yeah, it. Yeah, and I've been on the management side, like you, in the, but not as a facilitator to this level in a, on right. a bureaucratic sense. And so right. it wasn't an easy choice. Uh, but why, it was. Why did you pick it? Because I know you're such a you're such a meticulous, multidisciplinary artist. Being That's that you are an actor, you are a director, you you know you're a writer, you're a producer. You've done it all, you know. And across all these genres that I spoke about earlier, film, TV, and theater, all of a sudden making the decision to potentially putting that on hold. Yeah, having to do this. Hold. Yeah, must have been a really you know there must have been a really important reason why you felt that you wanted to do this. You're right, there was, and in fact I did have to even extricate myself from projects that I was slated to be a part of um, in the very near future. That's got to be hard. It, it was hard and it was, but you know, as a Canadian, as a Torontonian, it, you do come to a place where um, there's a choice, where as a one artist, whether you have one company and as whether you work with a lot of folks, you can only make so much impact, frankly. Yes. And at some point, when you get to the, with the good graces uh, that I've been very fortunate enough to get to um, as an industry member, whether it's Canadian or Torontonian or a person of my skin color and heritage, if you will, it's a super blessed place to be. Yes. Uh, and then the choice becomes, is this Am I going to limit or am I going to expand the possibilities of how I can help? And like you said, I do feel like a bit of a pioneer mm -hmm. um, in the sense that uh, the part of the reason why I've done so much in so many capacities is because that's what you have to do. As a person of color, yes. um, you don't have the, it, it doesn't make sense to everyone a kind of a certain path. You are a disruptor by the very fact that you're culturally different. You Absolutely. may not even want to be a disruptor. <laughs> Certainly, so right. I didn't set out to be a disruptor. But you find yourself that you are disrupting the status quo yes. because people are trying to define you. And so while it gives you opportunities like something amazing like Little Mosque or Midnight's Children yes. to get to work with Deepa and on a Salman Rushdie novel, uh, but it also does limit you. It does yes. take you out. And there's a moment in this country and in this city specifically where we can expand that horizon, where kids don't feel that there is a block, where anything is possible. I didn't grow up in an environment where anything is, was possible. I had to kind of make it possible, right. like you, like all of us kind of in the room that work in the media that, right. this way. We are all pioneers. And this is a chance to help a city 
not have to have so many pioneers exactly. <laughs> that are whacking away and you know trying to get a landscape but to help them p integrate to help them t take it to the next level right. where they don't have to feel alone and to open up that conversation between the diverse diverse cultures diverse genres diverse artists di diverse management types mm -hmm. and to really kind of collect them put them in similar rooms together put them in similar conversations we live in a technological world so they don't always have to be in the same room at the same time even exactly. they can just be connected mm -hmm. um, and this was an opportunity to be part of that mindset right um, and I got it I had an opportunity where I could just continue doing what I'm doing and do it I think to the best of my abilities and 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 get and and use that as a leverage you know for a bigger better career if you will or I could use my place as a leverage to really help and I felt that as a Torontonian my parents chose to come to this city and when you get to the place where I'm at you might have to leave the city to get to expand the scope but I and want this to be a case, city. Right? Yeah. And Zabe, that's been the case, right? Yeah. That's been the case. You're right. And I want this city to be a city where people come to instead of leave. Absolutely. And the only way I saw to do that was to take this chance and put my stuff personally on hold, but to try to help a city and its people get to the level where I think we could go. Yeah. We could be the next greatest, most diverse city that is a global media playground where people come to experience film, music, live events, sports, fashion, food. They use it, they do it, they're part of it and they enjoy it and they make money from it. Absolutely. That would be amazing. Why do you feel that the um, city chose you in particular, um, Zay? Because <laughs> it, it's, it's really interesting. No, because honestly, I, I, you know, I, I look at it and here you are, you come from like the creative side of things. I think that it's a very strategic and a very smart move for the city to pick you know one of their you know established creative um, personalities like yourself and um, someone that does understand the business side right. of things I think is really crucial as well to be able to really understand how to fulfill this role because oftentimes when you have titles you know in any um, industry these people come more from um, a business right. or an academic per yeah. se background yeah. you kind of come at it from both angles i feel that the city was smart to pick someone like that so do i <laughs> yes <laughs> um you know i think it's because i think you're right in the sense that the city saw in me someone who has done so of a wide variety of things and that's what it was it was going to take an understanding of a wide variety of creative endeavors and media to kind of take this on if yes. you will because it's a big on it's yeah it's yes. on <laughs> um, but also because i think my energy isn't about there's a lot of folks out there that and don't get me wrong i think the city has a lot of room to grow and get better and i think so do the folks that work at the city or, or are part of city council do yes. but i was i don't give the kind of energy where i think i need to fix the city i wasn't giving off that energy for me it was i'm here to help the city right. you guys already have a great idea i buy into your idea here's what i would do with that idea do you want to play right <laughs> um whereas i do think that uh you know there are folks out there because i know that they come from my industry and because our industry doesn't have we don't always have the best relationship with our bureaucracies, if you will, with Absolutely. our different levels of government. Mm -hmm. We feel um, that there's not enough resources, that they don't understand us. And that's true. But this city in this country was saying, we're gonna, we want to try taking this on. Will someone help us? Right. And there's, I think, a lot of folks that were, were saying, yes, I want to fix you because mm -hmm. this is what's wrong with you. And because it's my hometown, uh, there's nothing wrong with it. It can just, but it, it can get better. Absolutely. And I think that's part of what might have helped them take comfort in someone like me because that's the energy I was giving. It was an all-inclusive energy. And maybe that's, again, because I do happen to be of a different culture growing up. I was the only brown kid in the classes that I was taking or in my theater school, if you will, or the endeavors that I took on. I was a person who needed there to be an energy of inclusiveness and cr tried to create an energy of inclusiveness because that's what it's all about. I absolutely agree. Amen. 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 <laughs> One last thing I want to ask you, um, Zabe, is um, for you know for for all those communities out there which are you know considered minorities, 
um, but that's a whole other argument in my world yes. because I don't even, you yeah, know, I, know what you mean. I don't subscribe to that. But, you know, for those people who, um, you know, potentially feel that culture or gender or, um, you know, politics or social, um, you know, positions that they're in are limiting them from taking advantages, uh, taking advantage of resources like this, what would you say to them that they can look forward to? from the city in the capacity of the creative and multidisciplinary arts? Well, you know, I think the city and our team is very committed to uh, working with not only the industry leaders and stakeholders, but also the training institutions and the community at large. We're very aware that this is a city at the precipice of greatness, but if something isn't done in a cohesive strategic fashion, that there are people that can be left behind. and. Let's be honest, the people that will first get left behind generally tend to be what one would consider of diverse background or diverse heritage or diverseness, if you will, yes. not whatever the norm is. And yeah. we have, and they would be in uh, socioeconomic uh, challenges. And we want to make sure that actually the future, because if 51% of the city is born outside the country, and over a hundred languages are spoken, we have to make sure that those people feel united. Yes. Um, and that's what we're here to do, and you can use media to unite, you can use music to unite, you can use film, you can use the tourism experience. The tourism experience is all about uniting different people coming to a place. So we're in the perfect wheelhouse. Our whole team at Film and Entertainment is all about sharing, communicating, and visualizing and listening to different forms of culture and putting you together. So we're here to do that and we're here to make sure that the people, uh, no matter where you're from, uh, no matter what kind of money you think you can make, no matter what you are or who you are, you have an opportunity if you want to work in the future in this industry and that's what we're committed to doing. I love it. What a pleasure to have you here, Great sweetheart. Great to see you. Thank really you very much. I can't wait to see what um, more magic you're going to throw out there at the city because you seem like the person the kind of person to me from sitting here and chatting with you that you know not none of the like red tape and the this and the that is really where you're focusing your energy on you i feel that your energy is being focused on the bigger picture of what this all could potentially be it is and you know there is red tape there are processes but if you for me is if that's always the way that's how a, a just society and a, and a normal society does need a lot of bureaucracy. That's how it works well. Yes. But it's about what do you do, how do you take advantage of that bureaucracy to work for you, not against you? And how do you inspire that bureaucracy to want to work with you? And that's what our team inside is, to, is there to do. And hopefully our team will also inspire the city itself. You've inspired me today, Zay. Thank, Thank you so much Great for coming and chatting you. with me. You, you too, sweetheart. And I, I look forward to all the magic that, and, <laughs> and all the inspiration that's going to happen to this fabulous city and beyond. <laughs> me too. Can't wait.